आई हैव ऑब्जर्व अ ट्रेंड दैट इन द रिसेंट पास्ट द नंबर ऑफ पीपल हु आर रिजॉर्टिंग टू एक्सट्रीमिटीज फॉर एनी रीजन बी दैट बी पोलिटिकल बी दैट बी रिलीजियस बी दैट बी जस्ट सोशल एक्सट्रीमिटीज हैव जस्ट इंक्रीज इन नंबर एंड दिस स्पेसिफिकली इफ यू पुट दिस इन अ वर्ल्ड व्यू कॉन्टेक्स दिस इज अ प्रॉब्लम दैट uh is gonna emerge and haunt specifically our culture in the coming future and i feel that it is that we are, we just see a trend where extremities is extremity as a behavior is penetrating things uh, that were not extreme to begin with and this has been more of a reactive kind of uh, mechanism say i'm talking about uh, the people who associate themselves with sanatan dharma or people who associate themselves with specific ideologies that are non extreme and there have been sects and there have been people who have resorted to extremities more of as a reaction because they see no other way out or whatever may be the reason that they cite but then what uh, like do we as a society want to see ourselves develop in that fashion or how exactly should we have a vision of the future like where exactly are we heading and should we be heading that way see every extreme denotes a thirst hmm beat the extreme food consumption of somebody recuperating from a fresh breakup the extreme possessiveness of a protective husband the extreme competitiveness of a job seeker the extreme anger of a jilted lover all these extremes denote a thirst do you see this extreme anger extreme anything if today you are seeing so many extremes in all ways in the society they are indicative of a central common problem and there is not just uh, religious extremism even global temperatures are rushing towards an extreme are they not even sea levels are rushing towards an extreme are they not and i am inviting you to see that all these are interrelated the global forest cover currently stands at an extreme what kind of an extreme minimum it is lower than it ever was in history right global flesh consumption both in absolute and per capita terms today stands at an extreme no humanity was never killing so many animals per minute ever in history the average person was never consuming so much flesh ever in history the quantum of fissile material weaponized fissile material with the world today stands at an extreme does it not hmm computer processing speed today stands at an extreme as it not 
would you want to see how all these extremes are linked? We said all extremes come from a certain thirst, rather a central thirst. Religious extremism is gross, it's very visible, it's right there on the roads, it carries banners and flags. So it's obvious, because there are slogans and often there are riots as well, so it's obvious. But think of this age of extremes as one composite unit. All of this is arising from the kind of uh, despondency in the human mind that is unequaled in history. Have you ever had such a large proportion of humanity in a state of neurosis? Such a huge mass of people suffering from all kinds of mental disorders. Was it ever the case? The average anxiety levels in the population today are at an unthinkable extreme. And the world today is more prosperous than it ever was. The per capita average global income is an extreme today. Mankind has more knowledge than it ever had. Do you see what is happening? What is common among all those extremes is that they are all external. Mm. They are all external. They are all external extremes. Be it the processing speed part, be it the consumption part, be it the knowledge part. They are all outside of the human being. In the external world, man is rushing to deeper and deeper extremes. Probably the reason is that the void in our center today is deeper than ever. And this internal hollow, its extreme hollowness is causing us to rush to extreme measures in the external world. Where is this internal hollowness coming from? This internal hollowness is coming from a combination of mainly two things. One, a state of technology that can produce more and more for consumption and a state of philosophy that is liberal enough to deny liberation. So, there is the factory yielding more and more goods and there is the philosophy telling you that consumption of these goods is the purpose of your life. But the purpose of your life is something else and that purpose sits as a deep unaddressed extreme hollow in our chests. Technology, economy and philosophy 
have combined to bring humanity to probably its lowest state in terms of consciousness in its history. And that's why you see all kinds of extremism everywhere in the world. Because of the misdoings of organized religion, the last two to three hundred years have been of the decline of religion ever since the enlightenment period in Europe. There was a lot in religion that obviously deserved to be rejected. But the core of religion, which is the spiritual urge to be liberated, had to be preserved as the most precious diamond mankind can ever have. Instead, we chose to throw the baby out with the bath water. So liberation has been junked along with religion and consumption has been foisted upon us, mandatory consumption. That's the reason why you see people running to all these extremes because it's scary. We need meaning, we need purpose to life. And when we do not find meaning and purpose in life, we do stupid things like religious extremism. Like extremism in, in merrymaking. People want to go to the Mars to get some pleasure. An extreme step. Acharyaji, just uh, another thing, but which is slightly off uh, from this, but then I feel that uh, that has been something on my mind ever since you talked about uh, liberalism in the current society and all of us, uh, these external, external extremities relating with the hollow that is in our chest is a common observation about uh, about people or intellectuals claiming how a liberal society should be, but in fact not doing it. And uh, I, I mean, that's that's a statement. But then I want to know your opinion about, uh, say, how recently we have seen a surge in the people uh, who who say that they are homosexuals and who say that they associate. See, saying that sexuality is fluid is one thing, but this has extended to the point where people say gender is fluid. People say, I mean, it's not far away when they would even claim that age is fluid. There have been cases where there have been some specific, uh, say, perversions claiming some sort of... Uh, there has been this specific case in UK where uh, a specific group of people have claimed some sort of security under the LGBTQ plus uh, movement. And I just want to know your opinion about this particular thing. Why the rise on this? Because this is something which is relatively internal, I feel. But then again, we as a society are moving to its extreme. And is it not obvious, Devang? I mean, you want something in life when you don't get it at several places. You try it at uh, this place as well. And if you start seeing some little success in playing with your sexuality, then you just uh, squat there and you start insisting that this maybe is the thing that will take me all the distance. The little kid wants the real thing. It cannot get that. So it starts 
sucking its thumb or its big toe. It starts playing with its own body. But its own body is not what it wants. That which it really wants, we have assigned to dustbin in the name of progress, in the name of liberalism, in the name of science, atheism, in the name of several modern and postmodern ideologies. The real thing is there and if you will be restrained from having the real thing, you will do a lot of strange things. That's what we find humanity doing today. Strange and self-destructive. We are closer to self-imploding today than we ever were. Hmm? Think of this extreme. Think of the doomsday clock. Think of all the Kyoto Protocols and the Copenhagen thing and the Rio de Janeiro and the Paris thing. Think of what kind of extreme failures they have been. Hmm? Think of why mankind is so suicidal today. And you will know what we are missing. We are missing the real thing we are born for. In the long run, like right now, in the present state, the society is in a manner moving towards its self-destruction. So is there any way, is there any particular way? Like we can always have these sporadic set of individuals who have been uh, a little more enlightened than the masses, who have served as guiding poles for the masses in general. Uh, but then do we see a future for our society where we might not directly be led to that doomsday? No, you see, you have to do things if you want to avert what clearly awaits us. You need to have a thousand such discussions happening every minute at a million places across the globe. We have started a little initiative called Gargar Upanishad. It's just too small. It needs to be amplified a million times. This is what needs to happen. We clearly know what can save us. We know that. It's just that we, we need to work on it. We need to feed resources into it. We need to build an opinion, an understanding around it. We need to have more and more people enroll by way of understanding. There needs to be a lot of information dissemination, a lot of, a lot of publicity, a lot of propaganda. I guess this is it.